This fellow right here, Dr. Brick, is world renowned. He is a really, really famous guy. And and all the people that he brought with him, the docs and everything he brought with him from WDU, we can't thank you enough because all of you are doing incredible work. WDU, you know, of course now remember I went to Marshall. <laughs> and and really and truly, there was a time when WVU surely wasn't the WVU it is today. Now just imagine, and I think I'm right about this, but WVU in some, in some, I guess, polls or whatever it may be, is ranked like sixth in the entire country as one of the best hospitals. Is that not, I mean, it's in some things. And I'm sure in some things it may even be better. And then I'm sure some things we've still got a lot of work to do. But it's fancy Dan stuff today, what they do. And, and I commend you in every way, and I thank you, because we're a long ways from WVU right here. And you've got a lot of great folks that need you so badly it's off the chart. And if you could do some things that are just a little bit better, you know, how meaningful is that? At the end of the day, in the briefings, I say it all the time, but what's a life worth? Well, it's difficult, isn't it? And none of us can put a price tag on what a life is worth. But when you're able, and you do the work every single day, when you're able to reach out and really touch a life and change a life or save a life, it's big time stuff. And God knows in this terrible pandemic, we've we faced in excess of 7,100 people that have died. And uh, that's been tough on all of us. You know, it, it really, I said this to my wife the other night, people stand back and throw rocks and say, well, he or she, she should have done this, or we should have told us this and this, whatever it may be. And just think. I don't think there's anybody that's living. I know no one that could possibly be living that had a playbook that really knew what to do. You know, this thing's taken a lot of twists and turns along the way, and it's doggone tough to argue with the medical community's performance. I mean, really and truly. That's just all there is to it. So for anyone to sit back and second guess and Monday morning quarterback and all that stuff now, to me it's not fair. Because nobody had a playbook. Nobody. Not a living human being could tell us what to do. And what we've done is pretty good stuff. Sure. Is.
whether it be Dr. Brick, Mark, all of you, and everyone, I can't be happier because this, and I want to make sure that I get this exactly right, but Wells Community Hospital will be, we will be the newest rural hospital to join West Virginia's stroke pro, uh, telestroke program. Big time stuff. And you're now going to just absolutely be able to do more and more and better and better stuff. I commend WBU in many, many ways. I commend all your great department and everything and how you've led them in every way, every way. I really, really, really commend the rural hospital effort because you are our lifeblood. And I say this stuff all the time. Now, you could just hear a politician saying all this stuff and they may be blowing smoke up here, you know what? But I don't do that. I don't do that. I'm not a politician. I could give a hoot if you're a Republican or a, or a Democrat or Independent. I could give a hoot. All I want is goodness for Toby and Edith out there and all of y'all. And with that being said, really and truly, I think you do great work. And absolutely, to make it one notch better, that's what we should be doing. So I can't, I can't say any more than I'm really proud to be flying with you. And, uh, and just keep it up. Just keep doing the great work. Really, really proud of all of you. So thank you so much. And I'm going to clap for you all. Y'all clap for you. Got David all in the car, but I thought really and truly, it's, you know, I know you'd rather see a crazy baby dog than me. <laughs> I get mean, every bit of that, you know. But, uh, but I thought, you know, with the steps and then the congestion and all the stuff, it would probably be best leaving the car. But, uh, so y'all are going to y'all gonna have to have some level of withdrawal right now. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, all right, listen. Rebecca, you and Jordan yeah. and Bray all go get baby dog. <laughs> waiting on somebody you want to hear from. Uh, let me let me just say this. And this is really true. Two years ago this past Christmas, my son and my daughter just reached this bulldog puppy right over my shoulder and said, we're giving this to Kathy and I. She was eight weeks old. And since that time, she's grown into a 60-pound brown watermelon. But, <laughs> but that little eight-week-old puppy, I would have never, ever thought that she could be meaningful to a lot of people. And here's how she truly is. You know, I kept reading those names every day, and it's tough. And I just knew how tough you were having it and how tough the families were having it to lost all kinds of loved ones. It's just, just tough. And every time I looked at her, or every time I saw her with anybody, they, people smiled all the time. And then every time I saw her with anybody, she just loves everybody. And I just kept saying to myself, how could there be a better message? Really and truly. If we could make others smile, and we loved everybody, didn't matter if you are black or white or rich or poor or Republican or Democrat or whatever it may be, union, non-union, nothing matters to her. And it shouldn't matter to us. And really and truly, at the end of the day, you know, uh, she's given us a lot. She's really given me Honestly, there's lots of days it's been just tough. And there's lots of days you didn't feel very good. And uh, she's given lots of us life, me included. And so I, you know, she'll come from the water. <laughs> Maybe she's the politician in the family government. Maybe so. Maybe so. 
But, uh, you know, Andy Brashear, the, the Kentucky coach, I was on the phone with him last night. All of a sudden, he was at his home. Actually, it was the night before last. I called for him yesterday again, and I missed him. But, uh, but the night before last, when I was on the phone with him, his dog barked in the background. And he said, I think his dog's name is Winnie, and he said, Winnie just barked to be sure and tell, tell you to tell baby dog hi. <laughs> I thought, you know, here's a governor of Kentucky. He knows baby dog's name. <laughs> so, anyway. And take it. Pray. Pray. Take her harness off. We had a lot of people. No, take all of her stuff off. <laughs> Come on, baby. Get in your chair now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get up here. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. Come on. 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 You got to do better than that, aren't you? Thank you, Joey. In our front. Go. <laughs> Man, she'll just sit right here and say hi to y'all. <laughs> How about that? She's had her chicken nuggets. <laughs> and heaven forbid, I don't have anything else, Doc, unless you've got some of this. No, I'm just happy to come. Well, really, really, really proud to be here with y'all. Now, I'll just sit here and y'all come up here and say hi to baby dog. <laughs> Mark, have you got anything? Or anybody else got anything? How you doing? Good to see you. Hi, how are you? Uh, I'm going to 